Nani alienda akaona baba yake alafu akakimbia. Kaona baba yake akiwa mlevi na akiwa uchi. Na akakimbia akaambia ndugu zake, "Oh my goodness. Nilienda nikakuta baba yetu. Nikaona alikuwa." That's what is happening today. One of them took is it a blanket or a sheet or something behind and he went behind that this way to cover his father. And he, he acquired a blessing from there. And the first guy with his mouth, there was a very serious curse on his life because of that. Today we can talk anything about our fathers and our mothers. I saw, I heard they were doing. Christian family, God help us that we have respect and we have honor for our leaders, both in the in the political world and also in the church. That is not in my notes, by the way. Number four, <laughs> believes that Jesus, I'm talking about five evidences of the new birth, believes that Jesus is the Christ. Believes that Jesus is the Christ. And number five, evidence is has victory over the world. Chapter 5 and verse 4. Chapter 5 and verse 4 of John. For an angel went down for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first of the troubling of the water stepped in and was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. You have a disease of gossip. You enter into the water, you get healed. Because that guy went in and got healed. You have a disease of disbelief. You get into the water and you get healed. You get victory of your weaknesses when you enter the pool. And that is into Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, we will look very, very quickly. Um, the Holy Spirit, and this is the way we're going to say it, wind, a type of the Holy Spirit. Wind, a type of the Holy Spirit, because it's mentioned here a lot. Wind, a type of the Holy Spirit. Number one, wind is felt and not seen. We only see the effects. Wind is felt as it's blowing. We don't see it. We see the effects like a tornado. When it goes around and takes a building and blows it up, we see the effects. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, number two, sometimes he is gentle. Sometimes he's gentle breeze. Sometimes as a forceful gale or like a tornado. Same thing. The Holy Spirit, during revival times, I saw those days when he, the Holy Spirit would come upon people. Now, of course, today there is a lot of there is a lot of fake pretense in churches. Number three, the Holy Spirit is universal. The Holy Spirit is universal. Number four, the Holy Spirit is a type of now the wind is a type of the Holy Spirit cannot be resisted by physical force. You can't resist him by physical force. You can't resist him by physical force. Number five, indispensable to life. Indispensable to life. Number six, invigorating Meaning, it gives you 
life in abundance. He gives you life in abundance. So, obey the laws of wind. Is useful. Is useful when you allow him or when you allow it. It is de he's destructive if you resist him. If you resist him. Now there are those who resisted the Holy Spirit. And what did Jesus say about them when they resisted the Holy Spirit? Those who resisted the Holy Spirit. Now we will be later on looking at blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Maybe you ask yourself, have I blasphemed the Holy Spirit? Have I hurt the Holy Spirit? Have I abused the Holy Spirit? And because of time, I want, I want to go uh, through this chapter by looking at the character of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a secret disciple of Jesus Christ. Nicodemus was a secret disciple of Jesus Christ. And because he was a, he was a, he was a very important person in society, one, he was a ruler. The Bible says he was a, he was, he was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. A Pharisee. There were Sadducees, there were Pharisees, a very strict sect of the Jews. Okay? This guy decided, I am going to go to Jesus by the night because of his position. A number of things we want to look at the character of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, I believe, followed Jesus at a distance and didn't want to be known as one of his disciples. But during this time and this chapter, verse 1 to verse 21, it is all a conversation between Jesus and one person. We are allowed into that conversation of one person. Secondly, I want you to see that Jesus takes time with Nicodemus to make him understand. We as a church and you as a believer, the challenge you can receive from this is that every time you walk with someone, you lead someone through the process of the new birth, and then you walk with that person to maturity. You disciple that person to maturity. I don't know whether you're going to do that when yesterday I told you to read chapter 3 and some of you didn't read. I don't know whether you're going, also going to do this. That you lead someone to the Lord because you're understanding what is it to be born again. And you lead somebody to be born again. And you walk with that person, you become a disciple. You disciple that person for a number of months going into years until that person becomes a mature believer so that he knows what you know. He does what you do. He eats what you eat. This is what Jesus did. And in church, this is encouraged if we want to take scripture seriously. We need to lead someone and walk with him because that is not preaching in the front here. When I'm standing here on Sunday and I'm preaching to so many hundreds of people, it is scaring for many of you. But how about just one person? The one minute that we learned last year, one minute leading someone to the Lord. And you lead him and then you walk with that person in discipling him. You meet him once per week for discipleship, purposely. That you don't live, you live a purposeful life. That you've led someone to the Lord and you are walking with him in that life. The young people of our church today needs someone to walk with them 
in this life. The young people here, some parents might find it very difficult to disciple their sons or their daughters. But you as an outsider can begin to walk with a young person in this church so that he understands. Because I found out we take for granted that these children know A, B, C, D. They don't know. I can tell you they don't know. We assume that they understand. They don't understand. How about if you can walk with a young youngster in the church that on Sundays you can meet and go out together if you're of the same age and you're close, same sex, boys to boy, girl to a girl, you walk out there, you go and if it's a young man, you go out and watch football, if you love football. And while you are there, you know your purpose. You are taking time to disciple. Now, listen, I'm using this, I'm using this, listen, quality of life. When we come to Jesus Christ, there is that grade, there is that quality of life. You can live that quality of life or you can live secondary. All right? You can have a high view of scripture. What scripture say and you follow in your life. Or you can have a very low view. I was meeting with some leaders. We were doing some reconciliation. And I told them, friends, let me tell you something. I'm disappointed when I listen to you sitting here and talking back and forth. I have discovered that one of your problems is you have a very low view of scripture. Very low. You rather believe your intellect more than what the Bible says. You don't use the word to judge yourself. You use the mother cultural, you know, beliefs and what have you to make judgment. Uh -uh. We must use the word of God at all times. So in, jo in, in Gospel of John, Jesus just puts it to one guy. The message of the new birth. You must be born again. He keeps on. And then verse 14 he says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so also must the Son of God be lifted up, so that whosoever believes in him must not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen? Jesus was the only Son of God. God sent him out to die for the world. He sent him to die for the world. And along coming into the world, he sent him to pick up a body in the Virgin Mary and then to be born on earth. That's how he came. And he walked among us. He walked among us. He felt like us. He was hungry. He was thirst. He was, you know, everything. He felt like what we feel. And on the day of the cross, he just went there and carried all our infirmities, carried all our weaknesses, carried all our sins, and he died on the cross. That today, we may experience that new birth. We are important, friends. We are important, and I'm very important. You're very important. A child of God, somebody died for you. Can you imagine? Somebody divine, somebody human being, both went to the cross to die for a human being like you and like me. I'm so important. Amen. I thank God for that salvation. I thank God for what he has done for me and for us. That is the gospel of John. And he says like this in closing, for God, in verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is, not is, is, is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. 
This is a condemnation. The light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be men manifest, that they are wrought in God. In God. And so that's where the church gets born. That's where every individual experiencing the new birth connects with another person. Last Sunday we had Holy Communion. Connects with another person who has the same experience and both can have fellowship. And then during Holy Communion, they commune together. They commune together. They eat together. They fellowship together. Because the new birth you have experienced and I have experienced is for all who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I was in Germany last, in November last year, and I was preaching in a liturgical church. And that night as I was preaching, and they had all come together, they had Holy Communion. It was very interesting, the way they had the Holy Communion, there was the little cups, one side, they had for those who have become like the Pentecostals you can take from a little cup, but there was the liturgy, the, cle, the ecclesiastical order was on the other side, and they said, those that would like to take from this side with the one cup, with the one cup, yeah? there was one bread and one cup. So each person, you would go and pull a little piece of the bread, one whole bread, because it's one body, you eat, and the same cup, the same big, long glass, um, kind of, uh, you know, cup, you would sip a bit and give to your neighbor. And I saw both ways. There are people who went there, because I'm used to the little cup in our church. I went to the one little cup, and I took the cup, finished those who were on the other side who were taking the, the, the we, we were equal. There were enough people there, and there were enough people there. In the same fellowship that evening. It was very interesting. Very interesting. It was Holy Communion. We agreed you are right. We agreed, oh, even those ones, you are right. You are communing. We are communing. It is just a style, the physical, how you do it, that differs. There are some churches you cannot take. The bread that is leavened, that has, is this a yin or it has what? What do you call it? Eh? Yeast. Eh? Yeast. There are some places they can't take that because they say it has to be the unleavened bread. So they will cook very hard chapati that it will crack. I have no problem with that. If it represents the body of Jesus Christ, amen, have Holy Communion. I went to Congo in the bush and there is no bread there. Nobody's bread. There is no cup of any, any fruit of any type. Guess what? The, I was curious to see what we are going to have for Holy Communion. And here they had, you know, dried cassava, roasted cassava as the bread. And the cassava was passed and you had to break and get a piece that was representing the body of Christ. Then I was wondering, what are we going to take the, you know, as the cup? And here it was tea, and I believe the milk was like a buffalo milk. And, and, and we took the cup, and that was tea to represent the body, I mean the, 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 the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, there was the move of God. There was brokenness. There was miracles took place there. But one thing that stood out in that whole communion, this is not in my notes. One thing that stood out in that whole communion was as we were told to give an offering after the whole communion. And I saw a mother holding our baby as the basket was passing, she gave to the usher, the baby. 
up to today, that was in 1977, I've never forgotten that mother. She gave her baby as an offering. And the baby was taken by the ashes. I mean, that's a woman who was touched by the Lord. That's a woman who was really touched by the Lord. Yes. Now, after saying that, please, uh, 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 Reverend Bet, be ready next week. You may have some children here. Yeah. <laughs> but come to think of it, what is a child? God gave his only begotten son. <laughs> I can still feel somebody feeling, ouch, my baby. Nine, year, nine months carrying here, and I give my baby. Ah, oh, Lord, ask me something else. Ask me something else, Lord. But imagine, imagine, imagine. Somebody gave his baby Jesus Christ. And he was beloved. He was beloved. Somebody gave his baby. When we come to church and we talk about giving ourselves to God, being saved, give your life to God. God took a million steps coming towards you and he gave. He gave. He gave. So whatever you give, compared with what he gave, it's simply nothing. But he wants to see you, he wants to see the initiative in your heart. And why? We are always crying, Lord bless me, Lord bless me, Anna and Galavia, who are you? Did I see another, another, another day on a wedding? People think on a wedding day, you should not come with an offering. You should only come with money for those who are married. And I, and I saw they were sitting somewhere here and, and the basket was passed, they would not even touch it. They asked to go around and bring it around again. There are people, who just, they, they just stayed like that. You know, always squeeze goose at a petition. Watch a kutoa eye, a pana, nasia tia kuana kitu. Eh? And now, I mean, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. How many times we are crying, Lord, heal me? How many times? We are not buying when we are giving, no. But also, God sees our hearts. When it is time to give to God, let us give to God. When you have an opportunity to give, give to God. Because God has given us so much. After all, what we belong, I mean what we have and what we are, belongs to God. All of us. So that mother, I don't know what happened with the baby. They must have raised a mother to take care of the baby in the church. And by the way, where we were meeting, it was a, it was a temporary structure. Grass touched. I didn't see a building nearby. I asked, I wondered, who goes home with this child? By the way, in the Old Testament, when Samuel was born, did the mother of Samuel give him away? He gave him to the temple. Alipelekwa kanisani na akawachiwa Eli. Na Eli, mimi si ai. That's another story for another day. That's another story for another day. The guy grew up in church. Alienda kuona mama yake on Friday ama on Saturday. Mama nataka hii na hii namtengenezea na rudi. And ilikuwa anakimbia kanisani until God spoke to him. And he was doing that without knowing God. The Bible says the word of God those days of, of, of Eli and Samuel was rare. There was no open vision. Ingekuwa ngumu sana kusikia mtu akisema Mungu ameniongelesha. Ama mungu amenionyesha kwa ndoto. Akukuwa mambo kama ayo. And that's why when he heard Samuel Samuel, alikimbia kwa nani? Kwa Eli. Nenda kwa Eli. Kambia ulini ita. Hapa ana. We. Unaota. Rudi ukalale. Sleeps the second time. And Rudi. Unini ita. Ay. Uyo kijana. When he came the that time, Eli decided, ay. Mungu utembele anga watu. <laughs> you know we can forget. You know we can forget. We can be so religious, we forget that God visits us. God speaks to us. God leads us. God by his Holy Spirit. 
Amen. That's good for tonight. That's good for tonight. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to study your word. Open our understanding, Lord, these days as we study. Pray that, Lord Jesus, you will just be, be, be among us. Walk with us. There are some guys who are walking to Emmaus, and you are among them, and they felt your presence. Their hearts burned because you are with them. And when you opened, when you broke the bread and they saw the marks, they realized this is Jesus. May you surprise us again and again, speaking to us by the still small voice, through your word, speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching Bishop Molandi today. Please catch us next time for part two of John chapter 3. I pray that the Lord has spoken, ministered to your heart. I want to introduce to us a program we call Life Changers. Um, Life Changers is a student's ministry program where we recruit young people who have cleared a university or college, young people who are born again and are willing to serve with us for one year uh, in reaching out to students around Thika. So if you're there and you recently uh, you know, finished university or college and you're wondering what, what next? Why don't you give this a thought or a shot and um, we'll be able to work with you even as you serve with us for one year. You can register or call us through the number on your screen and we'll be able to give you more details on the same. Otherwise, God bless you. Catch us next time. Blessings. Life changes. He set us in character. To the ends of the earth.